Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Chat with Charlie. So uh, for my special guest today, uh, he's, well, we originally met when we used to do hospital radio. So uh, big ups to Connor Morgan. So say hello to everyone, Connor. Hi, Charlie. Thank you. Yeah, it was a while back now, wasn't it? Yeah. Hospital radio. Before Seems like pandemic. an eternity. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you, you've actually gone the radio route, haven't you? You've actually continued yeah. that. And so like you're what, Radio Cardiff now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I actually did Radio Cardiff. God, I can remember. I think I was 16. Hmm. I think I, I emailed them when I was 15, actually. And I was like, hey, guys, can I, uh, can I have a little nose down the station? And um, yeah, and ever since then, I had to wait till I was 16. And I did everything then. That was the first little taste of uh, radio. I knew straight away that's what I wanted to do. Like before yeah. I even started Radio Card, I was like, oh, this is it. This is what I want to do. Hmm. So we, we did everything there. I was like sitting in the corner for some like jazz soul show nice my cup of tea but that's yeah. what we first started doing and then i remember like there's so many good memories that have come from there mm. like i remember i was driving back from cardiff with my family and i had like a news like, bulletin at the top of the hour and we were there in the car like trying to find the frequency but we were just, just coming out of cardiff so it's like the worst kind of staticky rubbish Aww. ever and we were like is that you so i think it is yeah and um yeah so like but now i just do weekend breakfast which is mm. so much fun i do that in my own time i pre-record that Nice. And uh, I like that because you can make it sound as good as possible and then you can just check it out there and uh, hopefully it sounds good. Yeah, no no morning voice when you first get up, just like Yeah, talking. yeah. I always, I, always, I always do say, oh, early morning today, feeling a bit rough. And I'm like, it's like light. Yeah. <laughs> 4 p.m. On, on Wednesday. But <laughs> yeah, when, Wednesday at 4 p.m. I wasn't feeling too bad. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> yeah, um, it's interesting because... Um, Ezra, we had on the show, um, I think it was the end of last year. He also does a, um, a show on Radio Cardiff as well. Yeah. Um, the, the the Raw show with Prendy. Mm, mm. Um, so it's cool to have all of that. I mean, I don't know, obviously, if you guys know each other well or anything. But Do you know what? Well, I, I, I that's the episode I watched. Mm. And I was like, oh, damn, like, I should definitely just message Charlie because I'd love to get on one. Um, that's the episode I watched. And I watched a little bit of it. And... Mm. Um, yeah, I thought it was so funny because I know the Raw show. Yeah. But I don't know Ezra or anyone involved in it because I just haven't been down to the station for probably about like two years now. Yeah. And um, because beforehand I was pre recording before most people because it was weekend breakfast and I was like, I just, I can't do that. Like, but I'm really keen to still do it. Yeah. And then, oh, you can pre record. That's wicked. So I started even before the pandemic. So I haven't been there in ages. So I haven't met anyone. But um, that, that's what I like. There's such a variety there. And um, it's wicked. Love Radio Card. I've got to give it to them. It's like a passion project now. It doesn't feel like mm. a trog or like effort. Like, oh my God, here we go again. I've got to record two hours. It's like, oh, wicked. Let's do it. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's nice. And uh, it's one of the first radio shows that I got onto um, as well. So obviously, big ups to you for playing uh, my tunes as well. And big ups to um, to Prendy and Ezra as well for playing my tunes. So that's like two different shows on uh, Radio Card if yeah. I've, I've been on. Um, for anyone wondering as well, this is not actually the first time that me and Connor have done a sort of that podcast or radio show together because we had a, a one hit wonder show on uh, <laughs> the uh, Bridge End Hospital Radio. Do you remember that? I came Connor? out of nowhere, didn't it? We just sat down and we were like, when it wonders. Yeah, we just, we just did them. They were wicked. We went through. I remember we found a lot of them were from Australia, weren't they? That was quite yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, because obviously a lot of people probably know like Gotye when you had uh, somebody I used to know. And um, yeah, I yeah. Rem remember what's his name, Chris Moyles, was it the one who used to do uh, Radio One? Yeah, yeah, back in like 2011. He's probably like our generation probably grew up with him on um, on radio. Yeah, I yeah, because I remember my what I'd like first start listening to Radio One. It was Chris Moyles, mm. and I remember Radio One. Radio was the thing I wanted to do because I changed our profile picture to like it was the like Chris Moyles in the back of a horse for something. Yeah, it was like it was it was Radio, it was radio One promo. Hmm. And um, I had my profile picture on Facebook for the longest time as that. Um, so yeah. definitely that was kind of the first person I was like, oh, damn, like, they're wicked. I'd love to do that. Hmm. But I, I remember him saying that um, when the song came out, which would have been, what was that now, 2011, 2012? Yeah. Um, I want to say 2011, yeah. Yeah, I re it, would have, it wouldn't have been early 2011 because I remember I was going to um, secondary school. Um, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, and then... I remember him saying he's the type of guy who will release one big song and then maybe a little song after and then disappear. 
Um, exactly that. And he did that. And that's what happened. He, he did that. <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. I've just got it up here, though. 1.8 billion views. Well, there we go. I, I know I know it was a tune, but yeah. 1.8 billion views. That's insane. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't really appreciate the song when I was little. I was like, yeah, it is what it is. But I remember I went back and listened to it. I'm like, actually, there is something about no other song sounds like it other than obviously Bar yeah. Bar Black Sheep. <laughs> but, <laughs> Do you know what, though? I think, well, this is something I've like, not necessarily had like a an epiphany of thought about but like when you're talking about that like some that i used to know and it's a single that you think damn actually like listen back to you think this is like quite a cool unique single yeah i think like nowadays that is so important mm. like have you heard Strome's sante single no i haven't 100 percent recommend it it's so weird like like i was i watched the video and how like it sounds weird like it, mm. it's almost like it's got some sort of side chaining but it's, it's not He's like moved the, like the snares, like mm. the smallest of like a few bars, to, like to, to like he's he slowed it down the snares and then rushed the um the synth and yeah. it sounds just off beat, but it's, it obviously sounds in tune, but it sounds off beat and it sounds like it's kind of like galloping like hit yeah. the pin across. It's really really weird, but like the song's good, mm. but I can't stop listening to it because I'm like this just sounds so different and so weird and so mm. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I just like singles like that just like. When you hear something different, you're like, it's rare. You know. It's rare for it to get yeah. a radio push, though, with something that is different. I remember um, that's it. Is it sexy back? Uh, Timberlake and Timberland, like that. That, that, that sound of that. That's not a typical radio song for it to go to number one yeah. as well. Um, yeah, yeah. That sort of stood out to stand out to me when I think back to tracks that got really big that were kind of different. Um, Obviously, back then, but yeah, I was like, what, six? You were probably like seven <laughs> when that came out. <laughs> I was in Australia back then. Um, but yeah, so what? You, you've you always been uh, in South Wales, haven't you? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, always no, been no, South Wales. If I remember. I, I did. Oh, I, I spent a few years in Spain when I was younger, but yeah. that was like, I wasn't doing much. I was just mm. going to school and just being a young little guy over there. Yeah. Um, but I, I always do think about it and think back, like, because every day, pretty much, I'm like, I wish I still ha or still could speak Spanish. Yeah. Or I wish I could as as well as I could back then. Hmm. And like, it, I always think that. And like, there's always a part of me that's like, oh, I'll just get Duolingo and give it a shot. But do I? Never. I'm just like, I haven't got time or anything. And um, yeah. But yeah, but always, besides that, always been in South Wales and like, yeah. Yeah. I just missed it. I miss Spain. Like, I always want to go back. Yeah. Hopefully things will open up soon. I, I feel like we keep saying this, like, every bloody three months. Yeah, I'll be fine. I hope things yeah. will open up soon. And then they kind of do, and then they kind of don't. Especially here in Wales. Uh, sh- shout out Mark Drakeford. That's all I'm <laughs> going to say. My main Someone man. performs gigs. Um, not too happy. But um, I just want my What about back. you, though, Charlie? What about you? Do you, like, want to go back to Australia? Is it like something like you'd actively like to do, or is it like being there, done that, ticked it off? That's why uh, I was young. I was young. When yeah. I was over there. So it's kind of like I feel like there's still more to see and more to do. Is it somewhere I'll, I would I'd live? I don't know. Um, my family, like my life, and like the things that are important to me is kind of like my two mums, my two brothers, and uh, now my dog again because um, I got pumpkin um, now. But it's kind of like wherever they are is where I'm kind of I'm cool. That's home. I'll keep yeah. you comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do feel like I got a move to pursue music. Um, I feel like maybe Melbourne would be all right. Um, again, pretty expensive. Sydney's like just beyond expensive. I, I might as well be yeah. in London if that's the case for the, yeah. uh, the money. It's probably cheaper in London, to be honest, than Sydney. <laughs> what do you think with that then? Do you think like hmm. with the music and stuff, with what you want to do, do you think you have to move? Do you think like, like for the UK, um... for example, like London? Manchester, or do you think you know what you could easily make it, it I think as it, big as you like in Cardiff? I think it depends on your definition of making it. I think that yeah. is the importance. Um, I know Muramasa was from a, a Channel Island, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, so it's kind of like, and he's done well. I mean, I don't think people can. I mean, I don't really hear from him as much these days. That makes me sound like a message, message him. I don't hear yeah. from him as much. Well, how you been, mate? You right? <laughs> yeah, he just texts me all the time. Um, <laughs> just checking in. So, like, I haven't seen, like, noticed any new music from him, but for him to be on the Channel Islands and to obviously get bookings at shows, when I went to Part Life 2017, he was performing. I didn't catch yeah. his performance, but he was performing. Um, that shows that obviously you can, 
But is it easier to do it in a big city? Like, if I was in London, firstly, gigs are still running across in England right now. Yeah. They're not in Wales. Maybe things have changed when this episode comes out. Um, but as of the beginning of January, um, that's the case. Would I be doing more shows? Probably. Would that mean I'm meeting more people? Maybe. Yeah. Would there be more competition for me to get Definitely. those spots? There would. So that's the things that I've got to consider. Like here in Wales, there's like less competition. I know obviously with radio, it's a little less in person. So probably, am I right thinking for you, it's a little less dependent on where you live. It's just like the content you make. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. Yeah, um, but when it comes to like actually be physically being in person and doing shows, obviously more things are online now. Um, you know, when it comes to, you don't buy physical, although I've got my CD here in my hands. Wait, people don't really buy physical releases now. Um, but you still got to do shows in person for the most part, well, I prefer. That light keeps going off. But yeah, so I don't know. It's one of them ones. I think probably it does make a difference, but is it the be all and end all? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a good example. I think, funnily enough, Muramasa was mm -hmm. an artist that I listened to um, because his sound, his like music was so unique. Hmm. And like, not 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 to like you know dis discredit him nowadays his music like, like the past like two years I think he released music but like it's not as unique as it was before but it's hard to, as you say to like kind of hit that stroke every time mm. but like I think of artists like if you listen to Oh Wonder they're uh, they're quite mellow they're quite chill but they they're a duo and um, their debut album their self titled debut is like filled with like these slow poppy yet like really really cool unique sounds. Yeah, that debut was like amazing, and um, they're like kind of future albums. Although like are oh, good, and the essence is still there, mm. and no one here is kind of unique and as cool as their like debut. And I'm like always like, damn, like if they could hit that stroke, if Miramasa could make that kind of like debut again, if, if a wonder could hit that really cool sound again. Like I love listening to music. I listen to it every day, and on mm. Fridays I get so excited to hear all the new songs that come out. Yeah, and like I think when you hear something different, something new, you're like, damn. Like, yeah. you just can't help but not listen to it all the time. I think you need, with a lot of these artists, I think they need to evolve, find, like, a new sound with uh, things, if they really want to continue that growth and success. Um, yeah. Like, The Weeknd's just released, um, as we're recording He's... this. Uh, yeah. Was it Dawn FM? Yeah, have, yeah. Have you listened to it? I haven't. I haven't. It is I that... can't keep on top of The Weeknd. He's constant. Not in a bad way, but he's constantly releasing stuff. Like I'll be, I'll be completely honest. Like, I remember, probably, oh, I, I probably like was aware and was listening to the weekend. I wouldn't say I was a huge fan, but I was like listening to his stuff before Starboy came out. It was probably when like the Hills came out with their Beauty Behind the yeah. Madness. Yeah. And I remember back then the general consensus was his first projects trilogy. He never like recaptured that magic. Um, I love like House of Balloons and it's like a really dark R and B sound that really hadn't been done before. Um, mm -hmm. in the same sort of way. It became more popular, obviously, as it continued with, like, Drake's Take Care and stuff. Um, and, like, that's probably an example of an artist when you think originally, cool, they had this really cool, unique project at first. Yeah. Maybe he got a bit more poppy and watered down with the next couple of releases. Um, but from Starboy, really, he just kind of started going back to, like, that more like an 80s sound. And yeah. And... Um, after hours, I mean, like blinded by the by the lights and um, all these other tracks. Obviously, huge singles. Yeah. Um, just sort of captured that. But Dawn FM is just like it feels like even more like that's really funky, really like groovy, like eighties in a yeah. good way. Like almost some like like some even more Michael Jackson influence. But that shows an artist yeah. has evolved, and they've kind of they've changed, but they've they've been good. But I think now, if you ask if you ask people now if they prefer the old weekend or the mm. new weekend i think it's pretty even if not more people preferring the new stuff um, yeah. yeah i know what you mean like i think the weekend's done it so well mm. i mean obviously i don't know the, 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 the total back catalog but like yeah i was like when i like I, obviously every week i'm going through um the record pool and i'm looking for songs to add to play on the radio and every single week almost without a doubt there'll be a new weekend collab he'll be on some yeah. new single and I'll always be like, Jesus, like, I swear he just released a single like literally the, like the week before and he's already got a new one out. I'm like, wow. And um, I was like, for most artists, that could easily be like with Elton John, I feel like 
Elton's classic. He's iconic. Mm. But he's got so many the collaborations and songs out right now. I'm like even getting a bit of fatigue from him. I'm like, damn, El- another Elton records, which yeah. sounds so bad to say. But like mm. the weekend, I was like, damn, he's got another single out, another one. Mm. And every time I'm like, this is good, though. Yeah, this is good. Like Moth to a Flame with Studio Trust Mafia, wicked single. Uh, La Fama with Rosalia, mm. wicked. Like they're all brand new collaborations he's jumped on. And I could easily be like, like nip it in the butt now. You're just kind of yeah, you know, going a bit too hard. But then Hurricane with yeah. Kanye, I think that's a tune. Yeah, the one good. with Post Malone, yeah, that's a tune. Mm. Like he, despite quite easily being everywhere all the time, mm. um, is so so good and like. I mean, he's just done so well and he has reinvented himself slightly. And I think for better, like mm. he is good, but it's a fine line, for, like, you know, mm. consistently releasing music, mm. hoping something sticks and it just being like clear, like expertise and like, you know, got his craft down. Yeah. And it, like, I suppose contrasting that to like radio, obviously yeah. as an artist, you're evolving, you know, you've got to change with the, the sound and develop. When it comes to radio, like, do you find that like, you've got to sort of change with the times with radio, or do you feel like like the last years that you've been doing it is kind of stuck to the same formula? Yeah, um, I mean, like for me, I've been like discovering my show sounds, how it sounds, how I want it to sound, what I want to do on it, um, mm. as we go along with it. So it's, it's been as much as like radio changing as it is with like me mm. um, changing as well. And I want to say like I found a sound or something that I find comfortable that mm. i like enjoy doing and don't have to think too hard about now yeah and um yeah i feel like it definitely does change and like it's to like a grander extent with like raise your figures and like listener figures and how long people listen for for example mm. um but i think like it's a weird one because like radio is very much like here's this song uh it's all right it's good yeah love it into the next song and it's really quick and then you've got podcasts for example, this when you're sitting on something for an hour and you're talking about it. Yeah. And like it's it's hard to like like what would people prefer? Like what would people prefer? Like, do they want me? Like, I want to go in depth a lot about these songs. Like if I'm picking mm. a song, I want to sit there and chat for for about like a couple of minutes, you know, in like three, four minutes. Yeah. But I don't want to be like, oh, love that single from the weekend. Here's another weekend single. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Text. Um, which you know, it's easy to do that, but mm. Like I, I was messaging you and I was saying Zane Lowe, I love. Yeah. And like mm. he will sit on a record for a while and talk about it in such depth and be like, you know, mm. everything about this artist, blah, 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 blah. Why you need to know about them? Um, I think it's selling the artist as well. And if you can do that in like a couple of words, wicked. Mm. But, you know, if I'm playing like your record, for example, I, I, I make it personal i'm like oh i remember doing this with charlie for example and yeah. you know and like you know it's got it's got to sound different and like i think it's so easy to be like oh new one from jonas blue sounding mm. like every other pop single oh wicked um so yeah. i wanted to be like you know this single I actually like appreciate i think it's good i think you need to know about it for this reason mm. and um you know get excited about it uh it's just so easy to like you know listen to the radio and kind of switch off and I was yeah. always told that radio is like toothpaste. And um, like, you, when you use a toothpaste and you're brushing your teeth, you don't think anything of it. Mm. But if a toothpaste tastes crap or it tastes awful, then you start to notice this something's wrong, you know? Yeah. So until something goes wrong or something's up, you don't really pay attention or notice. And mm. um, so it's like, you know, trying to grab people's attention so they might be kind of half listening. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think it's so important. Like, it's not necessarily about me, it's about, you know, what I think is good why i think it's good and defending that because like you know mm. everyone's got their own opinions and hopefully people i want i honestly want people to listen because they go oh you know i quite like connor's tastes i like who he knows and you know who's, yeah. who he's playing and i want to find out more um that's what I listen to zane low i mm. understand his sound and i think this is kind of what i want to find more out you know matt wilkinson on apple music one as well i like his kind of like in the uk sounds so if matt or something like that i'll listen to his program and mm he'll dive into that and we'll you know I'll come out nine times out of ten with a new song yeah and uh, you know that's what I want to do I want it to be like all about the music and um, that's something I'm trying to like really harness in outside of radio now um, mm. you know become that kind of music tastemaker and you yeah. know that just 
has a say with what you know not necessarily what's good but what could do well what might do well hmm. in the future because i suppose another avenue for you then if you really wanted to push um like more more songs could be playlists as well yeah yeah um like i know obviously you know going back to cardiff radio the raw show do have their own uh, the shutdown show playlist with yeah. music on um I'm, I could be wrong, but you don't currently have like a playlist like that on Spotify, do you? Like where you do the show and then you put the music on? Nothing like that. I do have. Um, so I was doing a um, a podcast called Future Music Now, mm-hmm. which is basically just it was using Spotify's podcast. But if you went to Anchor, yeah. which hosts Spotify podcast, you can yeah. like do it so you like add the Spotify songs onto the the track. So yeah. you can end up making a radio show, but as a podcast for Spotify. Yeah. So I was like landed in my first year about that. So I did a few episodes on that. Mm. Um, so it's called the Future Music Now podcast, and I have the Future Music Now playlist. Um, so I still update that every Friday now with like, it's the only playlist I have because I'm constantly listening. I don't sit on playlists, if that makes sense. I'm listening yeah. all the time. But this Future Music Now playlist, I still update every Friday mm. with 15 songs that I think like, oh, you know, these are really good. These could do really well. Mm. Um, and I kind of, it's as much as like a reminder for me Hmm. But I like kind of like having that playlist, seeing what songs I picked like a few weeks ago, and then Radio One and playing it. Like Jack Saunders played it. I'm like, I oh, do like, yeah, you did with this song a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so like, but I don't do anything like that. I think it's definitely something to definitely do. Like, because hmm. playlists are huge, and I think, you know, I love them. Like, when I was looking for Welsh bands, and I played a, a song from Inland Murmur. Yeah. So they had a new single. I played that, and they post on their story about them being added to a playlist. Hmm. So I listened to that playlist. I was looking for, you know, Welsh bands. Yeah, perfect place to go. I just check out that playlist. I think that's so handy. Like, it's a place where you can just go and listen, listen, listen. I know it's like a podcast, isn't it? You find yourself and you find what you like, and you just get really in depth with it. Hmm. I think um, when it comes to the, like how people discover new music these days, um, I still discover a little bit from radio. Um, since I've got like Bluetooth in my car and stuff, I do listen to less radio. To be fair, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I always remember. I should have really mentioned it. I was I was speaking to a, um, another artist about this guy, um, Shay Lingo. He's a rapper from London, and it was actually I forget which show it was. Now it was a Radio One show. Um, it might have actually been a, the introducing show that they had on like mm-hmm. late at night one time, and uh, the remix to Black Girl Magic came on. And I really, I was like, yo, who's this guy? I got to check him out. And uh, I did like his music and it just went from there. Um, so sometimes I discover, you can discover music like that. I think a lot of the time people still discover it through their mates who are like, yeah. oh, yo, um, Charlie, I know you like artists X and Y. Maybe you like artists Z, you know what I mean? Um, and then you check it out. Um, or again, collaborations is a big part. So you might yep. hear like a collaboration between two artists, someone's featured on it. But playlists, again, playlists. I think a lot of people do listen to playlists. They might just chuck one in in the car because your average music listener probably doesn't know as much about music or isn't as like obsessed with it as me or you. Um, <laughs> playlist on, oh, I like that song. Yeah, that's wicked, yeah. That's it. So they are useful. I think it's really important, yeah. Mm. But like... I would say, like, even you were saying there, but like, kind of, your friend recommending you a single. Hmm. Like, I got a friend, Matthew, who was like, will always go, oh, just found this single. I think you love it. Hmm. And nine times out of ten, I do. Like, he just kind of knows what I like, and I'll vice versa with him. I'd be like, oh, check out this one, you know? Yeah. And I think, I always think radio is is is, is a less friendly, not a less friendly way. That sounds a bit hmm. bad, but like a less personal way of that. Like, you know. Yeah. You're yeah. going to visit them for this certain sound that they're into, certain sound that they're passionate about. Mm. And, you know, you want them to be like, this is a good single. Um, so that's why I listen to a radio show. I'm listening to kind of like the person as a, like a musical taste maker and like they, yeah. their taste buds I'm interested in. And I want them to be like, this is good. This is this is wicked. Like Radio 1, I listened to whether I think it was Jack Saunders and he played Wet Leg, who yeah. came second in the introducing up the uh, sound of list. Mm. love wet leg like i never would have like stumbled across them their sound was a bit like too different to what i would have been like hunting for on spotify yeah but like i listened to them and i was like they're wicked and um you know i think it's so important like music discovery and music is so constant and like as we know from like the weekend alone releases a single like every week 
And um, yeah. I think it's like so important to like, you know, have someone that can kind of go, this is like a good record and this mm. is why it is. Um, but yeah, I think radio is less, um, it's hard to say less popular, but like I'm the same as you. I've got Bluetooth in my car. Yeah. And <laughs> casual flex. Not necessarily hard, but like sometimes I have to like force myself to go listen to the radio. Yeah. Um, because like, I'm just like, I could just chuck on my playlists or chuck on mm. my songs and just let that go, you know, and let that rip and enjoy it. Mm. Um, but then I find myself mostly kind of like skipping the songs and going, oh, no, I can't, not fancying that. Oh, mm. I'm not fancying that. Yeah. I think so many times I'm like listening and going, mm, nah, nah. And then when I listen to the radio and I actually hear the song in full, mm. I'm like, okay, 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 yeah. Actually, to be fair, what, it's actually not a bad single. I think like, yeah. I got like force myself to not like force myself to listen, but like force myself to want to pay attention mm. and, and hear the song properly. Yeah. Uh, before I'm like, oh, that's rubbish. Get mm. that crap off. Um, yeah, so I think it, it's so important, but. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a complicated dance, isn't it? To yeah. Get your song popular, and it's, there's no one true magic about it. Yeah. But like for your show, like what do you look for then? I know this sounds like the most generic question you could ask a radio host, but okay. Yeah. What yeah. do you look for when you pick a song to play on radio? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. So like I uh, hmm. I was talking about record pool, and I'm like it's called like BPM Supreme or whatever. And they just chuck music up every week, so yeah. I'll listen to there for like the popular songs. Uh, um, but I still want it to be new music, you know. Mm. And even if they release the song within the last week, I'll um, and I recognise it, and it's like month old or whatever. I'll, I'll sit off that for a bit because I want it to be mm. really, really like you know, um, um, contemporary. And I want it to be even if it's not always about new Welsh artists, mm. um, it is new like music from around the world. And um, I purposely try my best to like not. Like obviously the majority of my music will be pop due to the nature of it being like accessible and it tends yeah. to be like three, four minutes long, which is just perfect. Um, but I mean, that's not to like say that I mean my personal tastes, like my favorite genre like I can listen to all day mm. is future bass, which you won't you won't hear a radio show in that. Do you know artists like Flume? Yeah, Flume, he's Australian. Yeah, Australian. You like like Kate Trinada then and all that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So like Flume is like I don't I mean how to describe his sound, it's just alien and i love yeah, very, it very very like, funky makes me want to exactly dance exactly yeah like i love how like the drum pattern is just a regular and it's just sporadic and crazy i'm like this is wicked mm. um but like you know speaking of flume like he's got a huge following but like i want it to be like a case of like i'm playing a variety of genres that i'm just playing songs that like i think are good and it sounds so vague but i'm not letting it be down to like genres and not letting it be down to like any like predisposed this position about knowing the artist, knowing that like if they're good i'll get them played like there's this one like punk single i played from um royal and the serpent which i never heard of and i can't even say the title because it's so it's got you know it's f boy rejects yeah and it's like a proper like diva kind of like screw boy song proper punky like ara levine crazy not my like cup of tea yeah but like it's a good record i love mm. it and i'm like yeah I'll play this a hundred percent. Like, mm. I like when people ask what kind of music do you like. I'm like, if it's good, it's good. Like, mm. you know, I, I've got a little like passion for like, not necessarily like foreign language songs, but like, because I was brought up in Spain, I want it to like as best to my ability hear songs that aren't English. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like artists like Angel, which is Belgian, and um. And even Strome, which I mentioned earlier about her, like having that really like hiccupy beat, that I think is the coolest ever. Yeah, he's Belgian as well, so he sings in French. Um, and Rosalia, who's um, mm. from uh, Catalan in Spain, um, like it's so so like many great records that are like not in the English language. And I, basically, I don't want to have any kind of like predisposition going into listening to these songs. And if they're good, they're good. If they sound quite cool and unique. I'll 100% play it and um, mm. yeah and when it comes to like, playing music that people send me like if they're based in Wales um, I mean obviously I, I listen and go oh that's good that's alright like mm. but I want it to be more about them being like oh you know so passionate about this single like mm. I'm doing this I'm doing that like I love all like I love making music it gets me if I can see their passion I'm like they're doing 
everything and their ability to like make a good song mm. and that's like worth way more than them having the most beautiful master in the world do you know what i mean yeah if they're like just i put all my effort and time into this i'm like then why am i not going to give it at least a bit of my time a bit of my effort you know yeah that's cool it's only fair mm. um so yeah it, it's just i want it to be a unique place of listening and you know mm. i don't want it to be um a regurgitation of like popular because I, I i will be swallowed up by bigger stations you know and it's i'm not going to compete with them because i don't yeah. have the budget they do you know i don't have the mm. talent they do um so i've got to find something uh, like a, a hole somewhere that i can kind of like dig myself in and and let that be my kind of hole you know so um yeah so as much as i can possibly play music from different languages and different people and just you know make that a place of like just good music and like music that isn't necessarily going to make number one or even even touch the charts you know just mm -hmm. a place where it's good songs and that's all that matters yeah you're in the old radio niche yeah yeah absolutely yeah exactly yeah. almost comes full circle then because it almost gives you an excuse to learn spanish again if you're playing loads of spanish songs does it this is it this is it i always listen to like have you like you know money heist on uh, netflix i've heard I, of it but i haven't seen it okay so firstly that's a must but secondly i force myself to watch that in spanish yeah to like just try and understand it and like yeah. I, when i'm listening to these spanish songs i'm like okay can i can I get the gist of what they're saying? Do I understand? Yeah. Um, so it's again an excuse to like, you know, learn it a bit more, but less, you know, less forcefully, just kind of like absorb mm. it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's a good way to go about it. Mm. Okay, yeah, because it was again that point you were saying about how you're not trying to compete with the uh, the bigger shows. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people who are here will be familiar with Adam Walton. And, Wicked, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you've noticed this as well. I tend to find that, the, like, for example, the music he plays tends to be darker than, mm -hmm. um, like, I tend to release a lot of kind of happy music. Um, yeah. Other than Loved, which is my, like, this is shameless, shameless promo. Other than Loved, my latest single, which you find on all platforms right now, um, which is he plays, the only other songs he played in mine are actually darker and less radio, what I presume to be radio friendly than um, some of the other singles I've released. But they're the ones he picked. So that sort of kind of goes to show that you know there are tastemakers and there are people out there who will pick songs that aren't what you'd assume are radio friendly mm. you know there are people there who are trying to get other niches yeah adam's great at that mm. i think like when i think of like a show in radio wales which i mean i do work for so i've got to be a little bit careful but not in a yeah. bad way because i'm not going to say anything bad about them because they're great and yeah. i think when i think of shows when i first um um when i first started radio wales four years ago mm. on the apprenticeship i honestly um you know i had such a love for radio but i honestly didn't really have uh an in, like not necessarily interest but i didn't listen to radio wales it fell out of my age bracket you know it, it yeah. wasn't you know um a, a radio show that i'd listened to and a radio program that i'd listened to and um i listened and i fell in love with janice um you know arrest her soul yeah. janice's program Rest because she was you know someone that was like just oh, i loved her because she sounded like someone down the pub you know and mm. she'd be like oh i, I can't I, I i had the lovely opportunity to, to to meet her and work on her show for a little bit and it was the best time that i ever had like she does all the music herself yeah she'll send it to the producer and go get this in the show this is nice. what i want to, this is what i want to have mm. and like I, that's the same with Adam because obviously he's got the uploader. It's all him being like, mm. get this in the show, you know? And um, I think the people that love music at Radio Wales love music. And um, the name leaves me now annoyingly, Ed. Ed's the bloke who looks after the music playlist. So mm. um, so outside of like um, Adam's program and Janice's, which are totally like self-driven by them. Yeah. Um, Shout out to and Beth as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Beth, exactly. Beth and Elvin, like, yeah. you know, these, the people that, Beth, pay for the example, the people that love music at Radio Wales love music, if that makes sense. Mm. And uh, that is so good because I listen to music programming and it's so good uh, to hear people that love music. And, um, you know, Adam is a person that you can listen. Like, I sometimes struggle to listen to a show that's got a bit of energy to it. And, um, Apple Music One are constantly writing beds and it sounds so slick with their imaging and everything just sounds oh like proper like 
beautiful and there's a lot of money gone into there with apple as you imagine um but like radio wales and adam walter in particular kind of like don't have beds mm. because they don't need it they're just talking about the music and um they have such a good passion and understanding and knowledge so i think adam's definitely a person that isn't going to go oh yeah this will sound good for three minutes on the radio he's going you know i have like a belief in this song i believe i can talk about it and i can and i think he can describe it in a way that you kind of go well i wouldn't listen to this song in the first place but because adam's done such a good way and a good method of describing it to me i'm like you know what yeah i'll, I'll give this some time and day yeah um, because sometimes singles with... need a bit of selling yeah you know? he did that with um i noticed after my single is like ah oh, here's loved by charlie J. And uh, after that, we played, and he, he went on for about like three minutes just talking about Minus. Um, yeah. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Minus is a great artist. But the way that he sold Minus, to be fair, if you didn't know who Minus was, um, yeah. you'd be like, yeah, I want to check this guy out. So, um, yeah. Mm. I think it's so important. That I, uh, I actually had the chat to um, the uh, to Colin at Radio Wales, who is the, uh, the content editor. And I was like, oh could you listen to this demo that I've made? Like, just mm. what, what do you think about it? And, um, and what he said, I, uh, I, I loved what he said. So it was a bit like constructive criticism. And he was like, the music programs that we want to do, we want to um, like have more of a, a deep dive. I'm not sure what he said exactly, but it was to that, you know, to that life. And it was like, we wanted, to, we wanted to be a case of, you know, giving that song the kind of care and nurture that it deserves, you know? And, that I've gone back to, as I said earlier, like I want to just like, I want to sit with these songs now. I want to describe them. I feel like mm. I'm so used to listening to fast next song, next song, next song. Yeah. Um, but really I want to like sit with these songs a bit more. And I think that is criticism that has gone in my favor. That makes sense. I could have mm. easily have gone rubbish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, rubbish. Um, yeah. But absolutely not the total opposite. And I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I totally get that. And I opened my ears to listening to Adam and Beth and the, uh, Hmm. They, they give the songs time because you know some songs might need time to like you know hmm. and, so, and some songs don't some songs can you can just listen and go tune you hmm. know that's gonna get big um so yeah absolutely i think um i think like i'm so passionate about bbc introducing as a, a as a brand and i've been yeah. fortunate to have a chat with um the people at bristol who who run the introducing up there nice um for the west and um they're like, it's so, I always find it so interesting when you're looking into a radio show and looking into a radio brand and, and a music brand, you know, and it's like kind of, you kind of think, oh, you know, they don't do too much. They kind of just chuck the show together and that's that, you know, job done. Mm. Um, but having the interview, having the chat and you're like, you start to realize that this is, you know, a passion project for everyone working on it. I think Harriet and James kind of are the two people that are involved on introducing in the West. And they're both lovers of music and they both have such good ideas. And um, I think it's so good. Like introducing is such an important thing and mm. it's played music from you. It's played music from yeah. other people. And like, I just, I, I like my dream is to kind of like work with introducing and work, you know, and, and help kind of like be involved with that kind of push. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think it's a lot of potential there. I think, um, you know, well to like an awesome basis, and um, mm. I hope Adam goes from strength to strength with the program. Yeah. Um, and I remember the first question I asked at Radio Wales when I first got there. I was like, "Why is Adam's program just called Adam Walton, and why is it not like introducing with Adam Walton? Like, why where's yeah. the introducing program?" And they give me, you know, a description, and uh, and I just think, "Oh, I look recently, and it is now BBC introducing with Adam Walton, which is wicked." So, um, mm. you know, not so that was. No, that was me. I mean, obviously, they're they not, not silly. They knew the naming conventions of the show. But, mm. you know, it's a great platform. And, I, you know, if anyone's listening, I think you definitely got to gotta send it. And mm. Beth and Adam, they're people that will, if they get you on board, they'll, they'll nurture you and yeah. they'll help you. Yeah. Not to be the devil's advocate here. Yeah. Not to be that guy. I've not heard anyone say this before yet. But part of me wishes there was an alternative to introducing yeah. part yeah. of me wishes that there was beat the bbc this, this this i'm not i'm hoping this doesn't get me banned or cancelled or whatever the bbc <laughs> the bbc have such a big monopoly For on sure. a lot of the media right now whether that is radio For or sure. music and 
that's great. They, they they help a lot of artists. In a, they've helped me a little bit as well. Don't get me wrong, but if there was an alternative that was some sort of competition, would that help make them like strive to do even better? That's what I wonder. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love mm. this question so much. Yeah. I love that question, and I got two like points. The first point is that like, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, I definitely think whether it's a total monopoly or whether it's getting close to a monopoly, um, yeah. it's definitely there. Mm. Um, because I was like, I remember talking to someone in work and um, bless me, a good friend of mine in work and they were like, oh, so what, you know, what do you know to do, Con? Yeah. That really well. And I was like, oh, I just love you know, new music. Mm. They were like, oh, where do you want to work? And I was like, anywhere that is doing new music programming. Yeah. And they were like, probably the BBC then. Yeah. I mean, they weren't saying anything wrong. They were well right to say, if you want mm. to do new music, you're probably going to have to move for a BBC radio. Fine by me. Yeah. But like, that made me think like, yeah, I can't really think of any of the stations, you know. Does Kiss have one? Now? Kiss, I think, do have something similar. Yeah. But, I mean, then like the fact that we have to double guess ourselves shows yeah, just that's how, I mean. you know, inferior, not necessarily inferior, but like how less known it is. Yeah. And um, so I think it's, you know, half well done to the BBC for pushing, introducing so well. Mm. Um, and then a shame that there is not so much competition for it. I we think, because need... you're right, like, even for me that wants to work in your music, if it's not introducing, if it's not the BBC, you're kind of like... Yeah. Like, we need, like, a, an ITV and Channel 4 equivalent uh, radio yeah, run. Right. <laughs> that's it. That's it, exactly. Yeah. So, like, mm. that's one thing to think about. And, like, um, and like, the other point is, like, um, it would be good for competition because um, the, the 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 weirdness of BBC Radio and that you know there is BBC Radio Scotland and Wales and One and Two and Bristol and Berkshire and you name it you know what I mean there, there's a yeah. lot of them mm. and um, everyone has their own rights to kind of go about new music their own way so yeah. like Radio Three believe it or not have a new music show for new classical. Uh, yeah. orchestral pieces and then six music have like probably more of a, like an indie approach to mm. their like uh six music uh introducing mixtape um so everyone's got their own kind of way about it and not to say some people do better mm. but some stand out more than others like bbc introducing in scotland is ace like it's so so well put together yeah um and like then it can be a case of like other introducing programs don't sound as good and like yeah. you know radio one with Gemma is really really good um so i think you know it can be so easy to kind of sit on the brand of introducing and kind of like hmm. let that carry you forward but i think i like i said i'm just so totally engrossed and passionate about like new music that i'm like oh damn i like i have so many ideas that we could like do for it etc and i really wish that you know there was that drive for them to be like right we're looking for something new we're looking to not necessarily reinvent but we're looking to push this what can we do yeah. um and i want you know i i um i remember when i had been to do for the bristol opportunity and um mm. i was talking about across the line which is the northern ireland introducing yeah i was just talking about how they all go about doing it differently and like you know i'm just i'm passionate i want it to sound the best and i want the welsh one to sound the best out of all of them you know i want adam yeah. to be the best introducing program um and if there was competition there would be a necessity to make it you know yeah not better because we we, we you know we me and you have both said how awesome mm. adam is at doing it but yeah you know competition is not a bad thing it's a good thing mm. and um yeah and yeah that's i just wish there was more mm. or new artists to get stuck into might just be me being greedy to be fair being a new artist being like cool so not only now could be on BBC introducing, I can also be yeah. on, you know, XYZ introducing. And, exactly, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean? of course. And get like double the opportunities. Oh, they're doing this, uh, oh, what, 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 yeah, you know, when they do like the little festivals, the BBC do the introducing, like introducing stage on the, um, they do it at um, Reading and Leeds. Well, imagine yeah. if there was like the XYZ um, introducing stage as well, and I could, yeah. you know, if, oh, I didn't get the BBC introducing stage, but I got the XYZ one. 
You yeah, know what I mean? This That's movie, what I'm yeah. thinking. It'd be like yeah. double opportunities for upcoming artists. And then for people like you and radio, it'd be double opportunities as well because you might be like, oh, well, it'd be like, you know, when people go to like Oxford or Cambridge, it's like, oh, well, I didn't get Oxford, but I'm going to Cambridge. Or I go Cambridge, it could have yeah, been, yeah. Sa- yeah. been the same for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. And you're right. I mean, obviously, festivals seem alien to us now but like yeah. there is like reading and leeds have the introducing stage and I, the just just to say as well um one of the artists that i saw at the reading introducing stage kofi stone yeah amazing yeah. guy love his music now and that was because of that stage so um big ups to kofi stone and big ups to bbc introducing for that absolutely absolutely i mean that's it like that's the thing like the the introducing can you know like they are the introducing artist of the year mm. and they have the stages and they have like uh like they have like the introducing like a tobacco dock, I think it was like for the dance. Mm. And um so like they have like such good opportunities and like I mean what's stopping as we said they're like Kiss doing like or like Capital what's it they're like the like Capitals like Fresh Jungle Fines Ball or whatever. Like, they have like they have their own events and festivals and stuff. Yeah. Like what's stopping them like having, you know, a new music show or a new music program or mm. someone that can like champion it you know mm. um because i know capital are a commercial brand and advert advertisers you know would rather be sat next to like uh like you know if they're a young brand they want to be sat next to some like pop show brilliant yeah. that works for them if they're sat next to some up-and-coming artists that like only people know Mm. there's that kind of stigma that they might switch off listeners and they're like oh i don't want to be next to that i want to be next to yeah. you know um i don't know what's his name um ed sheeran or people like that you know yeah. uh but like yeah i mean there's definitely opportunities out there but i wish there was more you know yeah <laughs> but it's like for just you a as really. an artist <laughs> and for me as like someone that wants to work in your music and radio you know mm. um there's people that do it, but there's people that do it really well and mm. really have a passion and nurture the next wave, you know? And um, mm. yeah, so like, it's a weird one, but like, if you're like, if like, for example, if, you know, you get onto introducing with Gemma and then next thing you know, you're going to play introducing stage, you know, that's amazing, isn't it? Like, yeah. there's definitely potential there and the opportunity there to get, you know, big and get mm. successful and, and, and you know, get all this publicity. Um, but if there was two of them, that's twice the opportunity, twice the competition. They're battling for you. They're battling for the best, mm. most listened to program. So it can only be good, you know? Mm. Oh, cool. We'll probably wrap it up here, but where can people find you, Connor? Where can they listen yeah. to your shows? Mixcloud yeah. and Twitter and all that? Good question. Mm. So, uh, yeah, Mixcloud and in fact, all my socials are just Connor Morgans, so it's mm. <laughs> least intuitive, least inventive names, but it's just C O double N O R, and then Morgan with the S at the end. And so yeah, so I'm across you know all the socials and Mixcloud to put some DJ mixes and my shows up for a listen back. So mm. uh, yeah, it's the best place to find me. So yeah, thank you for that, Charlie. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you as well. Thank you for uh, coming on the show.